Dick Dell was a man who wanted to be heard, right? Um, and let me just share a few things that I had um, learned about him that, that emphasized this um, fact about him. He and Leo Fender worked together developing new equipment and Fender used to use Dick as the, his new product tester Bender said that when the product he was testing could withstand the barrage of punishment of Dick Dell, then he knew that the piece of equipment was fit for human consumption. Well, after blowing up several of Fender's amplifiers, Fender took his friend, uh, Freddie Tavares, to go see Dick play in Balboa and identified the problem arose from him creating a sound louder than the audience screaming. And so the pair went and visited Lansing Loudspeaker Company and asked for a custom 15-inch loudspeaker to be made, which later became known as the Fender Single Showman Amp. And Dick's combination of the Showman Amp and a Fender Stratocaster allowed him to attain significantly louder volume levels, unobtainable by then conventional equipment. Dick Dell wanted to be heard. And I think that that is a safe assumption of all of us, of all human beings. Well, next up, we're gonna be having our uh, H2O hula wahinis, and they're gonna be doing a sacred hula for us. Hey, it's a surfing song, um, a Hawaiian king surfing his canoe. getting some speakers up here and uh, we'd like to have Dave Reynolds who uh, who made those programs for us thank you so much and also makes the best uh, surfing trophies in the world Aloha thank, thanks everybody for showing up to um, give our respects to uh, Dick Dale and everything he did um, back in 1990 Dick Dick uh, played at the opening of the Huntington Beach Surfing Museum on Olive. It was quite a, um, quite a shindig. They closed off the street. And I've always kind of respected him and thanked him for um, the support that he's given the museum. And that he, was, he was one of us. He was a real surfer and played the real surf music. And um, God bless his soul. Thank you. Um, we'd also like to have Mike from Zach's uh, come up here and and say some things. He helps out at all these paddle outs. We thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Mike Ali, owner of Zach. And I just want to share a few moments with you. This year we have done six of these. It's become scary. Who's next? And my job, and along with the Surf Museum and local surfers, is to do this event, support the family, continue this tradition for many years to come in a positive way and not a negative way. 
And long as I'm here, and my family, and you, we're going to continue that tradition. I just want to, I just want to share a few things with you. I lived in Hawthorne, California in the early 60s. Dick Dale, his family originally come from Lebanon. His last name is Mansour. And my family come from that part of the world, my son. I married him with the beach boy at Redondo Beach Auditorium playing for high school kids at 50 cents to go and see that. Think, this is almost 54 years ago. And here, some of his family is here. And I just want to say thank you for coming down, support his family, support the Surf Museum, support the local surfers. God bless you, and have a good day. We have uh, Tina up here. She's going to give a little bit of history, Woman of the Year from the Huntington Beach Longboard Club. Good morning, everybody. And I wanted to say to Miss Shirley, Nicole, and Tarna, thank you for feeling at home to let us help you share your loss. Take a look around and see how many people are here to help hold you up. We get it. I want to put that on the microphone soon. This is a simple little gourd. It's nature. It's natural. We all have rhythm. It's in your heartbeat. As a docent for surf culture, I've been privileged to have a series of interviews with the legendary Dick Dale. But most of all, I listened. Most memorable was our discussion of sounds with natural origins. Nature is organized by mathematics. From natural sounds come music. He described music as a language. Therefore, music is a mathematical language, he told me. That was pretty cool, he shared that with me. But yeah, he's right. Dick Dale, disciplined from within himself to pursue music as it occurred to him. This craving of his to manipulate sound, he called it. Dick Dale, born in Massachusetts. He aimed his early pursuits of music towards country western, adding the influence of his heritage with music and instruments of the Eastern Hemisphere. Who knew he was gonna become the father of heavy metal? Groundbreaking, record-breaking. Distinguished by his peers, inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame and the Surfing Walk of Fame, right up there. Dick Dale made his guitar a vessel of translation. His was a unique language of music, and it was instantly understood by the youth of the world. That's a hard one, that's a hard group to come across to. Through his lifelong relationship with music, Dick Dale made unprecedented demands of his instruments, his amplifiers, and of himself, challenging Leo Fender to further his own craft. In a fantastic alignment of innovation, they were reinventing the tools of rock and roll. Well, what the scholar knows by training, the genius already knows by instinct. Richard Anthony Mansour was a genius of sound infusing multiple genres until it became its own genre. He was compelled to share his results with the world. When genius intersects with timing, it becomes a phenomenon. Just when parents across America were hoping to quell the fire of rock and roll, this phenomenon took hold and he turned it up, articulating the sound of Stoke with suspenseful staccato a moody, defiant reverb. The fever pitch for surf guitar could not be stopped. 